So hi, welcome to the Results Rules OK podcast. I'm Dave Holland. And in, in sort of the spirit of, of attracting and speaking with successful, interesting, creative entrepreneurs, uh, my pleasure today to introduce you to uh, Denise Gosney, who is the founder, CEO, managing director, boss, leader, uh, team spirit, visionary for Razzmatazz over in the UK. So uh, Denise, welcome to the call. Please say hello. Good morning, David. Thank you so much for inviting me on. It's lovely to be here today. Good morning. And I understand you're sat in the fabulous north of north of England in the in the, in the, in the rain and the fog, or is it not so bad? Yeah, I'm just out, I'm from just outside Glasgow, but I live in the Lake District now. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you can hear it. It's not called the Lake District for nothing. It's very wet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're in sort of uh, mid eastern France, and it's uh, I've got to say it's blue sky, sunshine, and uh, oh, degree. I'm just just to throw some salt on the wound for you. But still, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, welcome. So as, as we say, this is a discussion between us to find out about you and what you've done, your business. So before we sort of kick off about the business and everything, but tell who's who's Denise. Gosney, who are you? Where are you from? How did you arrive? How did you arrive here? What's a bit of background? Yeah, so I'm from a little town called Renfrew, which is where Glasgow okay. Airport is. Um, I was brought up there with um, four, well, three siblings. My mum and dad had four children. Um, it's a bit of an in-house joke at our head office because my uh, bedroom until I was 10 years old was an airing cupboard. Um, <laughs> my mum and dad didn't have much money, bless them. So there was six of us in a two-bedroom council flat in Glasgow. Wow. Um, so yeah, yeah, money was uh, tight and um, my best friend went to dancing actually and I always thought, oh, look at her costumes and she's so lucky. Um, but my mum and dad just couldn't afford to send me to dance. Sure. Um, but as my siblings, I was I was the youngest, so as my siblings sort of um, got a bit older, um, they managed to sort of find enough money to get me to the little bits and bobs. Um, so I started dance, considering I ended, ended up being a professional dancer and choreographer, I started quite late actually, I was about um, 12 before I started dance um, and gymnastics is one of my big loves as well. I managed wow. to go to gymnastics as well. And um, when I when I first went, I was I was really quite shy. So I wasn't too sure what, about it or whether I should stay. But then I caught the bug. And, and mm -hmm. once you've caught the performing arts uh, bug, there's just, I mean, there's a big campaign, as you'll know, about Save the Arts at the minute. And yeah. it really is such a wonderful industry to be part of. You know, it, it's life changing for kids. Um, for most of us, it's, you know, we, we don't want to be the next Beyonce. We just, you know, it's confidence, it's life skills and just finding something that, you know, you can be creative and mm -hmm. it's just, just such a wonderful industry to be part of. So, so yeah, that was me. And then I luckily enough um, got my first dance job at Butlins. Butlins, um, well, which, which one? Which Butlins was it? Here in Scotland. I Fabulous. actually auditioned down in London, but um, I, I got sent just coincidence I got sent to air in Scotland wow. um, and you know what everyone should do a season at Butlins what amazing memories I've got yeah. from my time at Butlins mm -hmm. um, and sadly you know um, Bobby Ball died last week didn't he yeah absolutely yeah tragic yeah but he started out on stage at the was it that was through through Butlins as well wasn't it from, from his history he yeah he always did I always watched him um, Sunday Night Live at the Palladium and Cannon and Ball were my heroes. Right. So when I found out they were coming to Butlins and I was going to get to meet them, I was just absolutely in awe. And what, a, what lovely, lovely guys mm -hmm. both of them are. We had spent a lot of time with us. They didn't stay in the star dressing room. They came in, they had a laugh with us. They were such lovely guys. So that's a real highlight for me that I got to meet Bobby Ball. Wow, um, yeah, amazing. So yeah, and then I went on to do cruise ships. I was training, to, because of my, my gymnastics background, I was training to do trapeze as well. Wow, um, okay. For the Millennium Dome, which is obviously the O2 Arena now, but yes. in 1999. Wow, so okay, the auspicious date, remember, yes. <laughs> it was actually the Millennium Dome for the yeah. Millennium Show for the Queen. Um, so I was training to do that. I, d I did world cruises. I, I danced on London's West End at the Palladium myself. Um, but even even at 27, I realised that um, a dancer's career was quite short lived. And what right. what else was I going to do? Yeah. Um, and, and then I never really wanted to dance school as such um, because there's quite a lot of exams and formalities involved mm -hmm. in that. Also, I nearly got into Starlight Express on the West End and Fame. Right. Wow. Yeah, because I'm a, an acrobatic dancer, so I, yes. I got through the, the dance edition no problem, but um, 
when it came to the singing and the drama, I didn't have enough training or enough confidence. So I didn't get through that part. And going back to my Butlins days, way back, I mean, we're talking 30 years ago now. Uh-huh. It, it was very much like the variety shows where the dancers danced, you know, the comedians did their bit, the singers yeah. did their bit. But um, the performing arts was changing, actually. It was evolving and it was becoming a, what we call a triple threat. Mm-hmm. So, okay, your niche might be dance, but you have to be able to sing and act as well. You have to have all right. three disciplines behind you. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's when I decided that um, I needed to give back um, to kids. I, I didn't want to leave my industry. Sure. Um, and I knew how important all three aspects of the disciplines were. So... Hence, Razzmatazz was born, um, yep. and it was actually born in Penrith in Cumbria in the Lake District, where I live today with my family uh-huh. um, in, in the year 2000. Um, and since then, I've became a mum as well. So, Congratulations. Um, <laughs> no, I've got two boys now. Uh-huh. Um, well, one's 13 now and one's six. Uh-huh. So um, I became a mum as well. Actually, I was expecting my first child when I appeared on Dragon's Den. Really? Um, wow. Okay. Of course, I 2007. Actually, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I didn't actually realise that until after the filming. Right. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a, a bit about me. Obviously, um, you know, we've won lots of awards now. It's been 20 years. It was our 20 year anniversary. Same, yeah, 2020. So happy 20th anniversary. Almost Thank coming you. of age now then. <laughs> yeah, not, not quite the year I had. Yeah, still lots to celebrate this year. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was, there was very special, interesting, interesting times for everybody. We'll, we'll sort of touch on that a little bit later on. But I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not a dancer, as you can probably tell. I'm not, I'm not sh- shaped or sized like a dancer. But I have worked alongside <laughs> dancers, and the thing that struck me, we were in the business of making the dresses and the outfits. Uh, we were based in, in South London and we yeah. were supplying professional dancers. And the thing that struck me was two things as an outsider was the age at which these dancers need to start. And as you said, you, it was you know, you're too late when you're 12 almost. They have to start really, really young. Mm. But also the, the passion they have for it. As you said, you, you mentioned you, you got the bug. And yeah. these people we were sort of working with and alongside and sponsoring the dancers, truly passionate, you know, either amateurs or professionals didn't matter, but absolutely it was their life. It was really was their yeah. life. Yeah. And they, they, they clearly <laughs> got the same bug as you got as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, a, as I said, it's a wonderful industry to be part of. So at the minute, it's heartbreaking to see all the theatres closing. And I know awesome. we all have to do what we have to do. Um, and we will be back, the theatres will be back. So it is really important to keep supporting the arts and, you know, stay bit, stay behind the arts. Um, they are such a disciplined um, and dedicated industry. You know, it's yeah. it's amazing, the, the hard work that goes into, you know, and the years, like you say, the years it takes someone Absolutely. to train. You don't just arrive on a stage and, you know, you can perform. It's 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 dedication from the as young as the age of two. Absolutely, yeah. No, it, it, it amazed me, and I see this. Um, we do we do work alongside some martial artists as well. It's not that it's not dancing, but similarly, yeah. the earlier the, the they start, the better they get, the more confidence, and and they get the bug for it as well. And with dancing, you know, the, the same the same sort of thing. Yeah. So so, so you started Rasmus two thousand. And then I think the, one of the, I guess, I hope, I don't know what the highlights, maybe you'll also tell us, was the appearance on the TV Dragon's Den um, <laughs> program when you did your, your pitch. And you did it with uh, with uh, some of your youngsters that are da- dancing on the, on the stage, didn't you as well? Yeah, yeah. So I actually appeared on Dragon's Den by almost by accident, well, with Razzmatazz, because I applied with a game. I didn't apply with Ra- Razzmatazz. Ah, right, um, okay. They looked at my application and they were wanting people in to film quite quickly. And because I didn't have the prototype ready, they nice. looked at Razzmatazz and said, well, you've already got this fabulous business. Why don't you come on with Razzmatazz? Which wow. I'll be honest, I was a bit reluctant at first because it was my baby and you sure. know, I wasn't too sure. But I thought, well, I know that I've got a great business, you know, yeah. and you know, my, my families, my students, my teachers, my teams all love it. So, you know, the, the, at the very least we'll get some publicity from Absolutely. it so um yeah and then we took four children who um i'm still in touch with today in really? fact one yeah. of them is actually well when it comes back is on the west end in and juliet um one of them's in australia one of them is a dad the little boy's a dad now and Mirren lives in london they're all really successful kids you know when we are are there i'm saying kids they're now adults but in my eyes they're still kids <laughs> 
yeah, we were the first, because that was way back in 2007, we were the first pitch to take children into the den. Right, um, okay, yeah. So to this day, if you Google it, us actually, we're one of the top five or the top ten most memorable pitches from the den. Fantastic, um, there you go. Claim yeah, that, that was obviously uh, a highlight, but a scary highlight. I can imagine, I mean, because uh, we, we, uh, I think everybody knows the, the programme and you sort of stand there um, and you do your pitch in front of the dragons. That must be quite you know, scary, traumatic, nervous. How, how did you cope with that? Oh yeah, I was terrified, absolutely <laughs> terrified. Um, and obviously they want, they want it to be quite an intimidating atmosphere because it, at the time, this was like, this was only series three, I think I was in. So yeah. there was no lift, it was it was up those little narrow stairs. Right. And the room was really dark and you don't get to see the dragons until you're stood in front of them and okay. all the camera crew are all around the room. So wow. um, yeah, it's it's pretty intense. <laughs> it sounds it, yeah, it sounds it. Because I mean, but the, d during the pro, and I've done just looking at it, I've seen it, and I've looked at the details. My understanding is a num number of the dragons literally sort of dropped out, stopped. No, but Duncan stayed. Duncan Bannatine stayed quiet till the end, and sort yeah. of bowled up with a non-negotiation offer, wasn't it? Pretty much, which is unusual for the dragons. Yeah. Yeah, I had obviously done my research on all the dragons before I went on, um, yeah. and, I, and I'm not just saying this, I, I, I wanted Duncan to invest, and I right. knew that he probably would, because the others all liked products, they liked yes. to touch and feel something, whereas I had a service, yeah. and most of Duncan's history is all about services, he, he started off in Glasgow with ice cream vans, then nurseries, nursing homes, so he had chains of services, so I knew there was some correlation there. Sure. Um, so yeah, he did, he did stay very quiet and he said that he did very well with one of our competitors and that he thinks it's a great little business um, yeah. and invested the full amount, no negotiation. And apparently, I believe till this day, we're still the only pitch that received the full investment for what I asked for, for with no negotiation at all. Wow, well, there's another, another claim to fame. That's very, very cool. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, <laughs> so it started in 2000 and then Dragon's Den in 2007. And where, yeah. where is Razzmatazz now? Just give us a flavor. What, how about the scope and scale of, of Razzmatazz, the business you've built with your, with your team? Yeah, so we're really proud that we've got a, a network of 50 principals, um, all again, really, really dedicated, passionate principals that, yeah. you know, work with their, not just their, their students in school, but with the local communities. Sure. Um, we offer loads of opportunities for our students. We've even got our own charity that I'm really proud of. I've done a, a lot of charity work. So we've raised um, almost a million pounds in wow. scholarships for young people. Uh, we're very passionate about um, working with young people and giving back. So we've got our own charity called the Future Fund, mm -hmm. and that supports students when they leave us to go on to their further performing oh, arts okay. training. Yes, okay. Um, we also give scholarships out every single year. We work in partnership with um, a newspaper called The Stage, uh -huh. and uh, we give out scholarships every every year. So um, things that we do with the kids, we take them to the West End, um, mm -hmm. the um, Her Majesty's Theatre. We've performed several times on there. Um, we've taken them to the O2 Arena, funnily enough, as well. Wow. And um, in 2017, we led the parade at Disneyland Paris. Oh, fantastic. Which was wow. Really that's quite a, amazing. We were meant to be there next week. Um, yeah. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Sure. Um, we've postponed it till next year. But, um, but yeah, that's where, where we're at at the minute. We're in Scotland and England, um, 50 principals, and we're always looking to grow our, our network and grow our Rasmataz family and that's what we like to call it our Raz family. Absolutely no I've, I've sort of seen the on, on the web there is a family feel to all that you do with your team and yeah. the students as well it looks what you know it looks a very nice sort of spirit that you guys have as well. So, so from your in your sort of business career we're 20 years in now um, what any top lessons or most powerful lessons you've learned over business for people listening and maybe want to not start a dance school but in, in business want to do and emulate what you've done any top tips top uh, top lessons yeah definitely surround yourself with good people um nice. i've had the same team literally since day one um oh, my wow. um the ghetto charlotte that i work at head office with she was a franchisee for 12 years she's now uh, working with me at head office so she's been with me 15 years okay. my pr i was a dancer with heart at butlins um <laughs> 25 years ago <laughs> my goodness wow. so um yeah it's it's about building the good foundations and you know, working with really good people and 
showing loyalty if you know when they show loyalty to you you show loyalty to back mm -hmm. and we've got a really really strong foundation at our head office my team as i say have yeah. been with me literally since day one so so and surrounding yourself with people that are better than you have <laughs> <laughs> got skills that you don't have be yes. be brave enough to know that you don't know everything you know sure. and ask questions and surround yourself with good people and take opportunities as much as Dragon's Den was really scary. I could have easily said, no, I'm not doing it. I don't have the confidence. But I thought, no, just put, yeah. you've got to push yourself outside your comfort zone. Um, and now we're working with Matt Fides, which oh, is good, really, very good. Exciting. Good choice. Good choice. Um, yeah. So Matt, as, as you know, has got a, a really successful martial arts uh, franchise chain, as well yeah. as lots of other um, bits and bobs. So Working with Matt in the last couple of months after lockdown has been absolutely fantastic. And I reached out to Matt, so just don't be scared to reach out to people. Mm, you know, what? what's yeah. the worst that they can say? No, I'm yeah. too busy or no, I can't work with you. So, yeah, ask, always ask, always be a student, always ask questions. Mm. Yeah. And I think one of the things and I see doing do what I do, I see this a lot in terms of you know success and opportunity. They don't always come through the normal, natural, predicted routes, do they? You have to you meet people in a cafe, <laughs> on a train, when we were allowed to go out anyway. But it's yeah. also sometimes they're not quite planned and predictable. But if you say no to everything, you're never going to have these other opportunities. Absolutely. And um, one, one of the ladies we work with uh, in, in, in Luxembourg, she runs a, a dating agency and uh, Lux Dates. And one of the things that she says is that people meet, but not they don't, you, you don't meet your life partner in a bar, not or, or you meet them at a bus stop, you meet them at a friend's party, you meet them very strange places, and you've mm. got to open yourself up to these sort of opportunities. And, yeah. and the same in business, I think, isn't it? You got to be open to all things, and you know, we've got to, we've got to kiss some frogs as well. But if you don't say yes to some opportunities, <laughs> you're never going to get the opportunities coming along either. So uh, it's that's it's, it's always true for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and lockdown has actually brought some positives as well. You mm -hmm. know, we've formed alliances with a lot of our competitors, yeah. actually, who you know. Previously, you might have stood back a little bit and, and seen them as only competitors, but, sure. but we've actually all came together to help each other and support each other, which has been really lovely, actually, because yeah. we all offer something slightly different. And, sure. you know, we're all facing the same challenges. Yeah. So it's it's been lovely to help and support each other. I think the thing this 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 lockdown COVID has been it's been traumatic and horrible in lots in lots of ways for lots of people. And it is tough, but people are collaborating and supporting and being more open. And you know, we're all we're all just business owner entrepreneurs making our way, aren't we? And we may as well help each other get through this. And you know, when when it's all done and gone, okay, we can go back into sort of growth and competition mode. But yeah. Yeah, that collaboration, I think, is really yeah. good to see right now. And yeah. so, so, so what's what's next for for Razzmatazz? You've got you know, fifty. Um, Head franchise franchisees in the in the UK. What's next for Rasmus? Where do you see the business going when the lockdown has ended, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, we've got well, as I said, we're working with um Matt Fides. Mm. We've got some really exciting plans for our franchisees. Great. Um, that I can't reveal today. I'm sorry, David. Because That's okay, I won't all right. Okay. With them yet, but we've got some we've been working really hard with Matt. To, I think yeah. the danger after something like this, we've all gone through a trauma. Mm. And I think the danger is you can hit a bit of a plateau. And, yeah. and you can almost think you're exhausted, but you can almost think, oh, what now? Absolutely. So we've been working really hard with Matt. We've got some really exciting plans to make our franchisees bulletproof, you know, future-proof their business, yeah. make them more, much more profitable. And um, really, so that's, we've got some really exciting plans in the pipeline um, that we're going to, we're going to share um, soon. And just as I said, growing our network, our main aim is getting our franchisees back to their pre-COVID numbers, yeah. which... To be honest, before Saturday's announcement, most of them had already done anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. In fact, most of them were smashing their pre-COVID numbers. I mean, I'm I'm a, a parent myself, and my little my little six year old has got type one diabetes, so mm -hmm. um, he's classed as kind of high risk. My other child um, had a splenectomy and has got asthma. Right. Um, but for both of them, they're back at school, they're back at tons of activities, because I want my I don't want my kids to miss out on a year or two years of their life. Yeah. My son loves football, it's his passion. Okay. So we made a decision halfway through lockdown that 
unless we pre we're prepared to lock ourselves in our house until this is over, yeah. we have to carry on. We Absolutely. have to obviously protect the vulnerable. That's really sure. important that we all do our bit to protect the vulnerable. But um, it's it's important to get back out and get kids active again. And you know, their, their yeah. mental health is suffering too. So it's really important to just that that balance i think we're, we're social creatures aren't we we need to be active and amongst people as much as possible we need to be out there and, and as you say do whatever you can within the constraints and bring sort of some normality really so yeah. and what team does your, your your lad support can you say or um, I think it's Real Madrid, actually. Not, Real Madrid? Not my goodness, I thought it could be... I thought, it, <laughs> I thought my God, the Glasgow teams, that was all. But anyway, no. Real Madrid, okay, pretty good choice. <laughs> no, definitely not. No, no, no. Um, none of the Glasgow teams, and I best not say who I support. <laughs> no, well, you can. You're absolutely fine. But I know it's a, it's certainly a passion in Glasgow as well, isn't it? It's so very, you know, very passionate in Glasgow still, yes. <laughs> exactly. So go on, go on. You can say, I'm sure it's fine. Go. Which Which is your team? All my family support Rangers, actually, my in-laws, but I'm a Celtic. Oh, this is, this is good fun over Christmas, I would have thought, then in discussions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very good fun over Christmas. <laughs> uh, well, I, for, for my sins, I'm a, I, an Aston Villa follower, supporter, and uh, they were down in the Championship and back up again, and then they beat Liverpool, and then we got we crashed over the weekend to Southampton, so it's a real, real journey. Uh, yeah. Guys, but... Anyway. Yeah, my husband was watching that. He's Sheffield. He's okay. Sheffield. Yeah, well, nobody's perfect, but that's okay. I know. <laughs> Thankfully, he's not that into football. Um, yeah. I don't think they're. Um, I, well, I, I don't really follow football that much. No, being a Villa fan, I'm not really into football either. <laughs> just, <laughs> just one of those things, but still. So, so there are people. Hopefully, I mean, a lot of people will watch. Will be watching this and listening to this, and there are people sat there and they're thinking, especially all that's going on right now. Either they're maybe they've been made redundant, or they're questioning their career, or they're job or their business and they want to you know, do their own thing and start their own business for people who want to get started as an entrepreneur not specifically in in dance or franchise but just want to start their own business what what, what three tips would you have for those people that want to do this and make the leap yeah definitely do your research mm -hmm. um you know um i had another business actually nothing to do with this um and i probably being honest didn't do my research enough um right. and that's always a, a big mistake at the start so do your research, you know, do your sort of demographics, your customer focus groups, if you can talk to people, talk about what, what the demand is for the service or the product it is that you're looking for. As I said, surround yourself with a, a good team. Mm -hmm. You probably won't have much money at the start to, I don't mean a team of employees because you probably sure. won't have the funds to do that, but just starting, you know, with your, your family, your family friends, you'll probably find some of them of maybe, maybe you've got a friend that's a solicitor if you need to look at them to help you with sort of legal documents. Mm -hmm. So tap in on that. Don't be scared to ask people for help because you'd Absolutely. be amazed. People love success and they love people, mm -hmm. you know, setting up a business and trying to do better for themselves. As I said, I came from a two bedroom council flat and in Glasgow, my bedroom was a, an eating cupboard until I was 10. So, uh, you know, to see, you know, I'm proud of myself to see where I've absolutely, I've yeah, from absolutely. That, should be. You know? So yeah. people do love that. They love a success story. So don't be scared to ask questions. Don't be scared to ask for help. Don't be scared to admit that you don't know all the answers. Mm -hmm. um, look into things like Prince's Trust actually helped me out when I when I was 27 right. when I started out and okay. um, there's a lot of help and support out there even if it's not financial just to mm -hmm. tap into their knowledge there might be lots of free courses and um, to do with bookkeeping when you run your own business you will end up being the head of every department right. so you know at the start you can't afford a team so you'll be the head of marketing you'll be the head of accounts you'll be the head of HR, you know, you've got all these heads to wear. Um, FSB have found a brilliant support as yeah. well. Um, I'm a member of the FSB and have been for a long time and I, I found their support absolutely invaluable and really affordable. So I would recommend um, joining them. Okay, great. Um, and always be a student, you know, always be a student. As I yeah. said, keep learning, you know, always be sort of um, big enough to know that you don't always know everything, you know, sure. and studying and keep learning. So are you a book reader or a video watcher? How do you uh, how do you do your learning or tips and things for learning about business? Um, I have to admit, I'm, I'm not a massive book. I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit ashamed to read that, but um, on the internet, I'm just always yeah. researching um, my competitors or other entrepreneurs and, and on the internet and, and learning. And I, I reach out to people quite a lot and I ask them, 
questions how did you do that or yeah. you know um, and like I say working with people like Matt you know mm. Matt's just a really experienced very successful entrepreneur yeah. um, and he's so generous with his time and you know just reaching out to people and and asking them for, for advice. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it depends very much on my experience as well is it depends on who you hang out with if you can hang out with people who are sort of like-minded positive supportive helpful they don't yeah. charge you and we all do this anyway for other people as well but I do see a lot of people they start in business and you can look at the people they're associating with and you go they've got no chance because they're being held back or knocked back or held down or whatever criticized yeah. you really need to go in, in with a group of people who are going to challenge you but also pick you up and you know, motivate you and inspire you as well yeah absolutely yeah we've got a great team at rasmus has i could not absolutely have... I, see, I see your your your, your yeah. team on the website and over social media and yeah. uh, looks like it looks like a, a great a great bunch to be uh, to be around yeah, so are. so people they, they may be thinking they want to be on the on the Rasmataz journey with with you guys as well. If anybody wants to connect with, with you or your team and maybe consider becoming a, a franchisee or they want to just become a, a student or their child to be children to become students of yours, how do they do that? How do they get in touch with 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 you or your team? What's what's the best way to get in touch with you guys? Yeah, so we've got a, a great website. Um, yep. uh, it's just rasmataz.co.uk mm -hmm. and you can see all the locations there and you would just drop your local principal a line if you want your children to come along um, okay. for performing arts and life skills. <laughs> um, if you want to become a franchisee, we do a really informal, what we call a discovery den. Okay. Um, and it's a presentation all about the business, where we started, where we are now, where we're going in the future. And um, we'll do that with you. There's no obligation to proceed at that point. They call franchise in a business marriage. So it's really important yes. that, <laughs> yeah, that the brand is yeah. right for you and you're right for the brand. And, you know, it's really important that we get that right. And um, so, so we actually, we don't accept everyone that applies, you know, sure. they've got sure. to be right for the brand. Um, and I always ask them to do the research um, go and ask, um, ask people like the BFA questions. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of magazines out there, like what franchise that have brilliant Q and A's of, you know, what, what do I ask the franchise or, sure. um, and, and ask, ask the franchise or everything. There shouldn't mm -hmm. be anything that they, that they can answer you yeah. um, and speak to that network. What is the support like? What, what, what are you, do you enjoy being a franchisee? Are you getting the support that you were promised at the start? Yeah. Um, obviously looking at the financial projections, everything like that. Um, but yeah, they can get in touch with us just at franchise at razzmatazz.co.uk. Okay. Um, as I say, it's really informal at the start. We we like to make that um, the due diligence a, a journey in itself. Yes. Um, and ask as many questions as possible. And there's never any pressure from us. It's it, you should only sign when you're in the right position mm -hmm. with the finance behind you. The right you know mindset and time to make that business a success i remember i was in uh, franchising in my my past as well and one of the guys when we were working over in the us um buddy of mine called a guy called michael kick and he was into a franchise sales and development and he always said i think as you said he said that franchising is a marriage not a date it's not you know, you're there it's a long-term commitment and yeah. you know, for both parties you need to be really yeah. sure it's the right not just the, i think the the right business model in terms of numbers and structure and profits and sales but also as you've said i think team and passion support yeah. and the, the right people to be aligned with they want to be part of as well so yeah. uh, i think you certainly i think you certainly tick that box i can see that certainly there um do, do you is it possible for people who aren't in the uk and uh, generally you know uh, for people in luxembourg or france or the us or germany they want to buy our razzmatazz um franchise is that possible yet or you're not going abroad? yeah yeah we are we have okay. been looking at international franchising for some time now okay um we have taken razzmatazz um overseas with the tui the holiday company tui right um, Okay. We worked with them for 10 years. Um, it wasn't franchising, but we were working in, in lots of different countries. Um, so we are looking for international um, yeah, partners okay. um, across the world. So yeah, that's something that we're open to discussing. Or to. I'll speak to my, my friends and colleagues in uh, in Luxembourg, so what we can do. I'll, do yeah, <laughs> I'll, send, I'll send them the video anyway. So if they're watching this, yeah. they can get in touch. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Oh, thank you, David. All right. So, Denise, any, any final tips for the audience? We have an audience of, of thousands, as you can imagine, but any final tips from a rainy, foggy Cumbria or... 
just to stay positive i know we've all had a tough time since march and now england is going into lockdown again it's very easy i think to get caught inside your head and for me exercise is my escapism yeah so no matter how busy my day is i'm quite selfish and um, one hour a day and it's an hour where i either jog or i get on the spinning bike or just <laughs> just walking outside yeah. getting fresh air getting that hour where it's you, you know you're not a mum or a wife or a boss you're just getting that one hour of headspace and yeah we all have to follow the rules a bit longer stay strong stay safe and but we're all going to have a better year next year i think so i know so but anyway, this this will pass won't it it is going to pass tough as it may be and you know in six months time 12 months time we'll be able to look back and say you know remember when and yeah. then you know life will get back to some sort of normal again but it's i think it's really important to have that as, as you said this sort of vision passion drive and you've got to we've got to dance with this thing literally for now but yeah. it's going to end and uh it will get better it will get better as we go along yeah it definitely will just yeah staying staying positive really important right now absolutely yeah. and if you are struggling ask for help reach out and ask yes for that's a great point yeah i mean i think you know, look at the, the, the social media but there are people out there you just pick up the phone drop them a message or a note and and we all do it we have people contact yeah. us and say i'm stuck whatever it is reach out get help get some ideas just maybe, maybe just you know sharing a virtual coffee with somebody yeah, can yeah. just raise your day and get you back on track a little bit so absolutely great great tip just yeah. reach out so Fabulous. It's been a, been a joy. Denise, thank you for your time. I've really appreciated it. From a very you. sunny um, France, or rather damp <laughs> country. <laughs> it's been great. Oh, so thank, thank you. Thank you, David. Really appreciate it. And uh, we're seeing you again, I think, on Thursday on the Zoom workshop. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm going to join you on Thursday, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so we'll see you then. Say hi to Matt for us. Hi, Matt. Oh, uh, he'll be getting a copy of this video as well. And yeah. anybody watching wants to get in touch with Denise, it's razzmatazz.co.uk. Um, please reach out. Fabulous team denise thank you for your time and i'll see you on thursday but for now yeah. bye have a great day in cumbria you too. And, have uh, a lovely day in the sun <laughs> yeah i'm not going to mention it again but it's very sunny here <laughs> thank you david take thank care you. see you soon bye, bye, bye for now bye.